Hey guys, so sorry this took a little while, but I've got a lot of technical difficulties. So this is the Bob Ross Photopea on Chromebook project. You guys are going to be painting along with me while looking at a painting that Bob Ross has done. But it starts in a few easy steps. I'm going to start my project. I'm going to name it Bob Ross. I'm going to switch over to inches. Um, 10 by 15 should work just fine. Uh, do 300 DPI. I'm going to stick at 72 just so I don't freeze up right now. But uh, 15 by 10 inches, 300 DPI, white background, and hit create. So you should have a white canvas like this. Go ahead and start a new layer. On this layer, we're going to name it sky. So one of the things that you can do for a quick blend is just take a big brush. Now you can turn the hardness all the way down and actually try to blend your colors, but you know, you could do this a lot faster. I make a nice big brush, go to your colors. If you don't see your color tab, find it in window and it will pop in here. So go to your colors and go and find a nice, blue color that's what i'm doing you guys can do whatever you want with whatever picture you find i'm gonna go into a nice pink purplish pink and then i'm gonna go down into like a nice brightish orange maybe even going into some yellow it is up to you. If you want to do just big blue and pink and then make a merge, you can. Really up to you however you want to make your top look. So right now you guys see I have like three definitive, definitive lines. We're going to make them um, all blend together. The way to do that is to go up top to filter, find blur, and my favorite Gaussian blur. It just blurs everything. You're going to have this little window pop up. I know it's been lagging for a lot of people. Right now it's behaving itself. So the more I turn it up, the more of a nice blend I get. Really nice. So you don't wanna see the lines. So if you're still seeing the lines, that means you have not blended it enough. So really give it a nice blend. If you go too far, it just disappears because the pixels spread out too much. So I want it to be nice and light, nice light blend. There we go. I'm gonna press okay. So there's my sky. Looks like a nice little sunset. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name that clouds. All right, for the clouds, I'm still in my brush, but this time I'm going to switch over to, let's do a number seven brush. And then I'm going to pick up the size. You guys see that it kind of has this little, like, little stamp effect. Let's see what the other one looks like. Oh, the other one is more twisted. So this is the other number seven that's right over here. This one's a little bit more twisted up. So yeah, I could use this. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my size like so. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna pick a nice light color and I'm gonna turn my opacity down. Very important, turn your opacity down about halfway. That way it will look a little bit more natural. So now I'm gonna just start stamping my clouds. And I could keep stamping them over and over again on top of each other. And now if I feel like I've gotten too much, I could grab my eraser to soften up any of the edges. And I use this soft eraser, turn up the uh, size on it a little bit. And you could turn the opacity on your eraser as well so that you're not taking too much off at one time. So I have it at 48, so it's taking about like half of the pigment away. There we go, nice and fluffy. And then you could keep switching back and forth between. The brush and the eraser. That looks pretty nice. I like that. Now I want to do it on the opposite side, but you guys see like when I do this um, brush, it has kind of like a weird pointed edge going in that direction. And I want to rotate my brush. So let's get rid of what I just made over here on the side, you have information, you have 
properties, brushes, character, paragraph. Go ahead and press on brush and notice the angle on it. You can rotate your brush. There we go. Also, you could turn on down the spacing. That'll make it a nice smooth line when you are painting. Press on brush again, and now have fun and create your clouds coming in from the other side. Clouds are kind of framing your picture. Once again, if they look way too perfect, go ahead and grab your eraser. Oh, we did this on sky, so we need to start doing it on our clouds layer. We made a mistake here. It's all right, that's why we can go back or you could go back in history if you want to. Well, it doesn't go that far back, but that's okay. We're just gonna go up to clouds and we're gonna go ahead and hit brush and then put in our clouds in the brush, uh, in our clouds in the cloud layer. So be careful what layer you're putting them in. Okay, so I made my clouds here. So don't make my mistake and make sure you're always working in the right layer. Okay, so that's a little bit too much. Once again, I'm going to go back to my eraser and I'm going to just take away a little bit so it's not too perfect. Okay, so I have my clouds. They look nice. Next step is going to be to create a new layer. And I'm going to name this mountains. Make sure you spell mountains right. All right, so the trick that I have with mountains is I use the 87 brush. It's like this flat up and down brush. Um, doesn't matter what size it is now, but in the beginning I go to my nice blue color, but I go right in the center. I want like the center color and now I'm going to draw in my clouds. Okay, first thing first, you guys see how it has like a little ticker effect and the opacity is low. Let's turn the opacity all the way up again. Go up to the brush right over here on the side and turn the spacing down to 1%. Now you're going to get a different line. There we go. Now it's all smooth. I'm going to slowly draw in my mountains. Now, if you're doing something like this, it's not going to look natural. You want to really spread them out a little bit. So start with nice wide peaks and then sometimes they get a little bit more narrow and sometimes they get a little bit higher up and wider and then just keep moving your brush around but make sure it all stays nice and wide. That way it'll look more real. You could always go back and add a peak wherever you want. You can make another one a little bit higher if you wanted to. It's really up to you. Okay, so there I have my mountainscape. I'm going to flatten that out. There we go. It's nice and wide, no sharp peaks, and that way it will look more natural. And then I go in and color in the bottom to make it like the actual mountains. Now, this is where the fun starts. Go back up to your brush size and turn it down. Uh, I'm going around 40, so it's not too big. And now I'm going to just drop my color a bit on the color like board here to a darker shade. I'm going to put shadows on the left side, and then I'm going to put snow on the right side. So that means here's the middle of the peak. I'm just going to drag down some color only on the left side of the peak. So just find the tips of the peaks and drag down some color going down on the left side. This one's a little short. This one is a little bit longer. Depending on how you made your peaks, it's really up to you. All right, so we got them on the left side. Now add in some just random like dark lines don't make this perfect but try to go up and down 
and it'll make it look a little bit more natural. I promise you this will look good in a moment. Looks like a mess right now. Just putting in some color just to add some dimension for later on. Okay, so not too much. I still wanna see that lighter blue behind. Now I'm gonna switch over to my light color. So I'm not all the way white. I like to keep things a little bit more natural, but my grayish white. So same thing as before, only this time start at the top of the peak, but go in the opposite direction because you're putting down snow on the right side of the peak this time. Nice bright snow. Keep the blue. You don't need to cover up all of the original blue on here. You want it to peek through. So there we go. It's all on the right side. And then this time, just go in and add some white snow. Imagine that the snow fell to the right side of the peak. It looks like a big old mess right now, but we will be fixing it. Do not cover up all of those details that you did down here. Just a little bit as you are painting in some snow. All right, so it looks a little crazy right now, but we're not going to blend this together. What I'm going to do is right below your gradient paint bucket that you guys have been using is your blur sharpened smudge tool. Go ahead and grab your smudge tool and put the size up a little bit higher. I think like a nice 60 point 59 over here works. And what you do is just grab little bits and just drag it down a little bit. Don't drag it too much. It will not look as good. So just grab a little and drag, little and drag. And look at that, it's blending. And you're getting some nice, like distant mountains with some blended colors. I'm going down and slightly to the right. Notice how I'm not, I'm grabbing a little bit by little bit. That way you could still keep this kind of like, you know, nice definition in your mountain. So it's not just all a big mess. It all makes sense is what I'm saying when you do it this way by blurring it together. All right, there we go. Now I have my mountain peaks done. So three uh, layers so far. Now I'm going to create another layer. And now your mountains might look different in the picture that you chose for your Bob Ross. It is really up to you. You guys decide what kind of painting you want to make. It does not have to be like mine. In fact, I would prefer it if you guys attempted something different than mine. Now I'm going to make this nice like lower horizon line. I'm gonna go back to my brushes. I'm gonna pick uh, the number seven brush was nice. We like that one. Turn it down a little bit. I'm gonna pick a blue color in the center again, and I'm just going to stamp on some distant kind of looking lines. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to filter, blur, gauge and blur. I wanna kind of blur these a little bit. Yeah, just a bit for now, I'm gonna press okay. And then I could always layer on top of it. I'm going to rotate my brush a bit. I don't like the way that it looks right now. There we go. So I'm gonna go back and stamp a little bit more. Maybe go a little lighter color. All right, and then maybe I'll blur it. This is all in the distance. I'm gonna press okay, that looks fine. So now I can even move this around. Maybe I wanna bring this like mistiness up a little bit, bring it down lower. Uh, it's a little bit dark for me. Press enter to get out of transform if you need to. It's a little dark for me. I want to turn this a little bit lighter. So the way to do that is if you go to image adjustments, you can, sorry, image 
adjustments. You can choose all of these different adjustments that you could do on your layer. So I'm going to choose brightness contrast. Make sure you have your layer selected before you do this. Brightness contrast. And then you guys could see I can turn up the brightness. Woo. And I can lighten it. I can turn up the contrast, lower it down. I just want to turn the contrast down a little bit and lighten it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so that looks fine. I got my mist. Now we're going to get to the portion of making the actual um, landscape with the trees up front. <laughs> 